welcome folks and thank you for joining uh, this discussion session about uh, lessons learned running Kubernetes Community Days um, across Europe. Um, I'm Matt Jarvis, I'm, I'm Director of Developer Relations at a company called Snake and I am one of the organizers of uh, Kubernetes Community Days UK and I'm joined today by my awesome panel who I'm going to ask to introduce themselves very quickly starting with Alessandro. Yes, hi, I'm Alessandro. Um, I live in Amsterdam and uh, run the Dutch Kubernetes Meetup with, uh, with, uh, with awesome people. And we did Kubernetes Community Days Amsterdam 2023 in February, just two months ago, and it was great success. Hello, my name is Annalisa Gennaro. I'm active for the KCD Italy um, in the Cartographers group as well, and I'm a newly appointed, freshly appointed ambassador. Hi, I'm Max Kabecher. I'm from Germany. I'm running the KCD in Munich and organized also this in the beginning of this year the KCD Ukraine as a fundraising event. And beside that, I do also some meetup. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Paula Kennedy. I co organize KCD UK and we just opened our CFP on Monday. <laughs> so if you'd like to talk at KCD UK uh, later this year, you should apply now. I see what you did there. Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you all, folks. Uh, I'll come back to you in a second. Uh, but I wanted to start by giving a very quick overview of what Kubernetes Community Days are for those uh, who may not know. Um, so KCDs are community events organized by uh, local community folks for the community, but kind of under the umbrella of, uh, of the CNCF. Uh, so there's lots of help there from the CNCF that we'll talk about uh, later. Um, but they're a way of really growing the, the kind of local cloud native community in your region. And events typically, you know, emphasize the, the local kind of flavor and region and culture. So you can see some of the stats there from the, uh, the overall program success, which are some awesome numbers. Um, 63 events in total. Uh, 16,000 plus attendees, and these are, have happened from all over the world. I did have a lovely slide with a world map on it, but it won't display properly, so we'll skip over that one for today. Um, but in stats of 2022, um, 18 KCDs and across 15 countries. So it's been a, a really super successful program. Um, has anybody in the room been to a Kubernetes Community Day? Awesome, thank you for, for all your support. Anybody organized one? Oh, brilliant. So a round of applause for all the folks who've helped organize these. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's kick, th kick things off and get into uh, some of the challenges of organizing these events. So putting together the, the right set of folks is super important for a successful event. Um, what insights uh, can uh, you folks on the panel share about uh, the, the sort of people who, in an ideal world, you should have involved, sort of the mix of skills and things like that. So I'm going to kick this off with asking Max, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think for the team, you really early need to think about to have a good mixture of people. Like, it's you, you definitely need someone for marketing, uh, also when, when you're like maybe tech by heart, but you really need someone who can do the outreach, who attract the people for the event. Just popping up somewhere, it's not bringing you anyone. Um, in our case, we had luck that we uh, also had someone who knew already how to organize partially events and has a pri has feeling for the prices for drinks and stuff like this. Because honestly, out there when you organize something, the most of the people wants to make money also out of you. But when you try to make a community event, you have a limited budget. So it's good if you know already, oh, maybe this drinks is too much or this food is too much. So um, this helps very, very much to have some people who can help you from their experience. They don't need to be professional event organizers, but they need to have a feeling for it. Um, and then, yeah, obviously you also need to have somehow a good connection to the community to find the first speakers who can bring in, where you can discuss about, but become speakers also a little bit later. And yeah, this, this general mixture in the beginning is very, very important to have a good kickoff. Paula, do you want to uh, add anything to that one? Uh, I'd say it's important to have quite a big team if you can, because for us, I mean, we all do it as our hobby, kind of voluntary, it's not our day job. And so if you only have a small number of people, it means there's a lot of work for a small group. If you've got a bigger team, at least you can split responsibilities, you can share tasks. And if someone has a really busy time at work, someone else can pick up the load. And I think that's quite helpful. Um, Alessandro or Annalisa, anything you want to add around, around people? 
Um, not really, but I agree with Paula. We are 14, about 14 people for KCD Italy, and we organized in two different teams, uh, one marketing team and the other technical, and we meet up uh, once a week, all um, um, as far as marketing is concerned, and every two weeks we all organize us. And that makes it easier to take tasks on and to uh, back up other people's workloads. You really just need enthusiasm that you, you, have, you must have it before you join and grit if you don't have it you're gonna learn it quite yeah. fast so yeah um, how many how many f out of interest how many folks were in each of the organizing teams for these events I know Annalisa you've said it was 14 uh, more or less yeah UK I think we've got nine altogether uh, we were around six to nine dish okay no, the, uh, we, we had a core team People that all year long organize yeah. that, and then we have volunteers on site. So pe some people they decide yeah, we'll they come, wanted we'll to be come there. To that but a, a little yeah. bit later, hopefully, yeah. if we get if we get timed. Um, okay, so that's um, awesome. Thank you for, for your insights there. So the the next kind of big big thing here, and probably one of the big elephants in the room, I think, when you you know talk about putting community events on, is that putting on events is not cheap. Um, even a small event has. Uh, fairly significant cost to it. So the next kind of starting point for discussion is around um, money. Um, and I'm kind of thinking here, you know, uh, if you're happy to share how much the event cost, please, please do. I think it's an interesting, uh, interesting thing for, for people to understand. And, you know, uh, how, do you, how do you raise the money? So I'll, I'll start off with, with Annalisa. Yeah, um, KCD Italy this year will be for the first time in person. So we are talking about in-person events. And about, it would cost about 70, 80,000 euros for 250 people, people around. Um, sponsorship is crucial, uh, let's say vital. Without sponsors, there's no event because it's very unlikely you will cover the cost with the, the ticket sale. So um, before that, I would make a step, take a step back, a step back um, talking about the need of the fiscal sponsor or fiscal entity. Because uh, as you know, you have to put money in advance and you have to find someone who can do that. Uh, in our case, um, we decided for a third party agency uh, who help us on the fiscal and administrative sites and on the logistics as well. Um, in that way, um, we have no big problems with cash flow and uh, invoicing. So you need a fiscal sponsor to take payments and make payments in advance before sponsors are in identified and found. Um, um, once set there, uh, you have to produce a prospect, which is not as easy as it sounds, because you have to find appealing perks. And uh, it's not that easy because uh, you have to set boundaries, clear boundaries as well with companies, saying and repeating that KCD events are community-driven, community-oriented events um, organized by volunteers and with no-profit uh, goals. This is not a very easy to convey message uh, sponsors want something back. Uh, they want leads. They want uh, brand visibility seems uh, not to be enough for them. So it's always a negotiation with them. It's uh, a struggle somehow. And uh, uh, sorry, I've got notes because it's my first time ever, so I have to look at them. Uh, we don't understand the reasons why it's so difficult to find sponsors. Uh, sometimes, probably, it's a question of higher sea levels that do not fill the community, might be. Um, there was the post-pandemic time that caused problems. Uh, this year is the layoffs time. Uh, it's never the correct time for asking money. It's n budget is always allocated, whether it's uh, January, February, uh, June, uh, it's very really difficult to, to solve that problem. Um, so that, that is our uh, experience. We are lucky because um, we organize us, I have five companies that back us up. So we managed to uh, put some money in advance easier. 
but again, we have to cover 8,000 uh, euros cost, so it would be um, a battle. So, Alessandro, do you want to uh, give yeah. your thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, we share all the financials. It's important to be transparent. Yeah. Right? So, if they are anonymized, but um, we, we can share, we can share with you, all of you all, all the all the costs and the in incomes. Uh, it costs one hundred eighty thousand euro, which is more money than I ever seen in my life. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. it was a bit scary. But we covered it. UK was a similar. Yeah. Similar we thing made five thousand euro, which is a long yeah. lo loss of the <laughs> inc <laughs> including all the donations we made and uh, you're not giving up the day job though right no no i don't think so <laughs> not for now uh it is scary but you, you you can you can pull it off so a bit of planning bit of uh, uh well don't don't think too much luck is true through luck but it's also hard work right so we and all the 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 organiz organizers they they went on and they ping a lot of people be prepared to get a lot of no's right so that's okay uh that that helps you build character and um, and you, you you have to to keep going right so and then eventually things will go well so so uh, we are happy that uh, that uh, thanks to the, to the amazing team we pull it off yeah thank you uh, Max or Paul or anything you want to add that we, we haven't covered there already uh, obviously you will need a lot of time to find sponsors so our first KCD Munich was like on a very short notice just like six months from like the first idea till we we hold it. So this was like every day running around and like, hey, do you have something for us? This is a great event, first time, do you want to come and so on and so forth? So we had obviously a lot of time of struggle to, to find money. We thought it was a little bit easier. Um, for the second time now, we have like uh, not almost a year, but like nine, nine to 10 months in preparation. It's way more relaxed. So take this time, don't, don't rush. Maybe because one month is like the perfect month where you want to hold the KCD in your, your area. It's maybe a good idea, but you will have a very hard time. So give yourself the time so you can also find the sponsors. Just to add on to what Annalisa said as well, the, the thing that's helped us is having the organizing team, a number of people, and then all of those organizing team companies being able to put money in helps you get <coughs> started. Because it is one of the challenges, I think, is the cash flow, where you have to pay for yeah. certain things up front. You have to pay for the venue. You might have to pay for catering. You might have to pay for certain things before sponsors have paid. And one tip I would recommend is, it seems like bigger, the bigger the company, the slower they are to pay. <laughs> yeah. So true. True. if true. you are worried about cash flow, you We're might We're naming no names here though. We're Paul, naming obviously. no names, no naming and shaming. <laughs> but the bigger they are, the slower they are to pay, yeah. in my experience. So going with slightly smaller companies, scale up startups who might have a bit of cash that they can pay quickly, might be better for cash flow. Okay. Folks, I'm going to have to move you on on this one because otherwise we're not going to have enough time. But um, we, we can come back at, at, at the end if there's more questions about money. So um, you've raised the money. Now the second most important thing, I think it's probably about the content. And this is another super important uh, uh, topic. Um, speakers are clearly the lifeblood of any event. They're why your audience is going to be turning up. So um, what are the challenges around... Uh, managing the call for papers and getting speakers. I'm going to start with, with Paula on this one. So, um, call for papers, I think, is the starting point for us. So, open it and then publicize it and keep publicizing it and keep publicizing it. And you do find that with, a, with an open CFP, you'll get 90% of the submissions in the last three days or something. It's always, people leave it to the last minute and then you'll get a whole lot. But it's really, really worth just continuously advertising it. Um, I think the risk with CFPs is a lot of people will, you, you'll see a lot of the same faces will apply in the same kind of like community. And so one thing that we really tried to do with our KCD UK was also to do direct outreach to people that might not have actually wanted to apply or thought about applying, but we wanted them to come and speak. And so we had a sort of a, a list of people that we really wanted to invite. And then our third action that we took was to actually try to go to local groups in the UK that support underrepresented communities to try to get more diverse voices in the room. So we actually approached different <coughs> groups, different meetup groups and asked them if they would put forward speakers so that we could make sure that we didn't have a lineup of folks that all look the same. Um, Annalisa, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, we had the same experience as Paula just said. 
always the same faces, always the same voices, which is fine. But again, it would be nice to have uh, more, more, more diverse and new uh, people on stage. Um, we had big problems, real troubles in engaging uh, diverse speakers. We tried every possible channel, even outside CNCF. We reach out to women in tech, she tech, um, groups that are um, meant to voice diversity. We reached, uh, we contacted directly individuals that were um, suggested by CNCF contacts, but probably there are so few, speakers available, available are so few that I, they are overwhelmed, overloaded by requests. So probably they can't uh, take part to any uh, CNCF event at higher or lower level. So, but I want you to tell a story, a personal story that happened to me last year. I'm very new to CNCF community. I started just last year and to the industry as well. It was uh, the first, uh, prob yeah, first marketing meeting or something like that. And a person asked me to uh, take part to um, talk as a co-speaker for, for the CMCFP of Valencia. At first, I was incredibly flattered, um, but I was new, newbie. I'm not a non-tech person, so I was rather surprised. And when I asked the reasons why, this person replied, oh, well, the CNCF wants and likes people as co-speakers. They want to hear more female voices on stage. So this person didn't choose me for what I am and what I could give. I was just passed by in front of his eyes and he asked me to get on the bus. So I'm not sure this is what we really want. Um, so I, I think it's a very delicate uh, topic, very difficult. I have no solution at all. Um, I can tell you that for KCD Italy, uh, the marketing team is made up of uh, five uh, women and one man. Oh, ciao, Marcello. Yeah, he is. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you. And we, nevertheless, we find very difficult to solve uh, this, this issue. Uh, but again, we don't want to have uh, women just because they're women. So it will take time probably to find uh, a way out. Uh, Alessandro, Max, do you yeah. want to add anything to? Oh, to the personal story, thank you for sharing. Uh, well, as an organizer, as a team of organizers, you really have a chance to set the stage for your conference. So it is the most important job that you can do. Making the program, curate the program, don't publish the agenda before you check for diversity. Don't do the mistake. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's your responsibility to choose well because the, everything comes from there. The, the happiness of the people attending, their satisfaction comes from, uh, from the quality of the talks. So, yeah. yeah. Max, anything you want to? I think everything is said on that. It's, yeah. it, it's complicated to, to get it right. Um, but I also need to say it's not only the, the guidelines which we need to uh, Im put in place as good as possible, but it's also like, meanwhile, company sponsors asking for like, hey, how is your ratio? How is your diversity ratio? If you cannot provide this, I take my money back, I take my speakers back, and you can do the same by yeah. yourself. So there's also like, meanwhile, other pressures coming in, which is good on the one hand side, uh, to be honest, but then it's also like the other way, like what are you doing to bring us this diversity? How do you as a sponsor, bring this diversity to us. It's because in the end, we are just sitting there and like, like we are begging for people who wants to speak. We are begging for money and like asking like, hey, let's come together, join us. But it's like someone needs also on other places to enforce this and, and enable this. Thank you, folks. I, I mean, I think the reality of that is, and I think this is the message that's coming across from everyone's uh, comments there is that you're very unlikely to achieve a diverse uh, uh, lineup just from putting a CFP out there, right? And I think it's important for people to understand that point. Okay, so um, we've got some money, we've got some content. Uh, this, you think, is Amsterdam, right? <laughs> Looks fantastic. I'm sorry I couldn't be there now. 
Uh, so the final uh, big piece of the puzzle is the place. So uh, what do we need to think about when we think about finding uh, the right venue? Um, so, um, Alessandro, if we can, yeah. uh, it looks like you had a great venue, so... Uh, we had a great venue, yes. Uh, expensive, but great. Um, <laughs> no, it's important. So, it, it venue has, uh, has to have a soul, right? So, we didn't like... That's why, uh, that's what I mean by you set the stage, right? Yeah. So, if you choose, uh, like, one of these, uh, like, a corporate offices, then your conference is going to be a corporate thing. And this was instead, like, an old sugar factory, and uh, or transformator, uh, yeah, no, electricity, electricity station, and um, it was also a club uh, that came in, in handy when we did the after party in the club. So it was more cozy than uh, than you know, like very very precise. So that that set the stage for the old conference. Yeah, so, yeah, awesome. Um, Max, what, what's your um, yeah, so in our case, in the in the first KCD, it was actually quite funny because we searched for the right size. So it was like, you, you always have the problem of like the combination. How many speakers do I want to have? Is it one track? Is it two track? Is it one day? Is it two day? So it's like you start first puzzling around and then you need to find one of the venues in your city or in the area where you are, uh, which is sometimes getting very difficult. And then you start asking for like, hi, how much does it cost? So then you get another... Um, uh, variable into this one and it's getting even more crazy so we w ended up actually with a location last year which we did not entirely liked it was a little bit too much cozy for us we we imagined a little bit more space and more <laughs> more yeah uh, possibilities for for the attendees but we received a lot of positive feedback in the end because we like give time to for the people to move from left to right we give enough time to uh, talk to each other um, we had, for example, the problem that we served the food and the drinks in the same room where we also had one track. So what we did, like, okay, we took the first and the last track out so that when we bring in food and when we start serving the food, there is no talk going on and no one is getting disturbed by it. Um, so you can make, even when you have maybe something which you, in your imagination, it looks like, wow, well, very big venue, everything is cool, tons of stuff. You don't get it there. You can still make it very cool. And especially when you can you know, give the time for the people to come around, then they can can adapt to it and, and feel more comfortable in it. I can see you well, th thinking <laughs> there, Paul. Uh. No, I was just thinking back to the fact that uh, for us, we did KCD UK, and it came. The first one was virtual, so we didn't have to worry about venue. And then the second one, when we came to start planning it. The fun thing in our committee is that we have representatives from different parts of the UK. Mm. So we have Engl certainly England, Wales, Scotland. I'm not sure if we've got anyone in Northern Ireland, but anyway. So then when it came to choosing a location, before we even chose the venue, there was a lot of uh, anti-London sentiment. Let's just put it that way. A lot of people were like, well, why are we going to London? But uh, we did go to London because you know, that's the easiest place for people to get to. So I'd say that was a, a particular challenge for us. But in terms of choosing the venue, we went for, I think accessibility is really important. Yep. It's like a number one thing. Like if your venue is not kind of wheelchair accessible, like that should be out instantly. Um, and we went for quite a central location. We liked our venue. It was a code node in London. It's kind of a community hub space anyway. So it was perfect for our size, perfect for the breakout spaces um, and centrally located. And went very well. So we're going back to the same place this year. Um, what about um, uh, some of the challenges around whether the venue can, you know, I mean, accessibility can mean a lot of things, can't it? What about uh, the sort of dietary requirement bit and things like that? That can be quite challenging, right, in terms of the catering. Annalisa, did you have to think about things like that when you're picking venues and catering and all the rest of it? Not really. Okay. <laughs> no, sorry, I was thinking about it, but catering, we, we delegated that, yeah. that issue to the agency I talked about. So right. we just told them, be careful about all possible um, okay, interesting. scenarios that okay. you can encounter. But and they, were, they handled that with... Yeah, I will tell you, I will answer this question in July after we will have right, the case okay. detail because I have no idea. So we are anxious and yeah. uh, curious about how it and, and Alessandro, you went yeah. all vegan, right? Yes. Because I mean, it just makes it simpler. Yes. <laughs> uh, how many vegans are in the room? Yes. 
you, saving the world. So <laughs> we could make a choice, and yeah. we did. And we said, okay, for two days, you can be vegan. Yeah. It's all right, you're not going to die. We even have a vegan barbecue. We had fun. It was great food, actually. Pineapple pizza is no, vegan, so next year, uh, totally. No, it's um, so we, we asked them, can you work with us on this, right? Yeah. So we, we, that was our strategy, our direction. And they worked with us. It was delicious. I couldn't stop eating vegan burgers. Uh, I'm not vegan myself, but uh, then we were on the news. There's a movement of vegan leaders. They wanted to interview us. You can actually be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, so it's, uh, okay. it's real. You can do something yeah. about it. Great stuff. Right, so... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit because I do want to leave some time at the end for, for questions if folks have them. Um, but um, we're kind of on now to how do we actually get people there? How do we promote and, and sell the tickets? Um, and I'm going to ask this one to, uh, to Annalisa, I think. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, thank you to Audra and Katie for all the efforts because uh, you can find um, a detailed plan for marketing and promotion activities on the CNCF uh, repo. So just start from there. Um, you have to start months earlier. Once you choose uh, the venue, you found the venue, just start with your promotion activities. Um, uh, as for a case in Italy, we invested um, from the beginning in storytelling. So uh, we created a logo, we um, invested on a logo because we had a story to tell and we have been doing that for the th through the th three years. And we open uh, official accounts, uh, social accounts. We have a Twitter and LinkedIn accounts. Uh, we have a social posting plan. Uh, we try to be um, uh, active all year long, of course, not only during and uh, before uh, the event. But we ask for advocacy. We have ask for advocacy to all organizers with their personal and corporate um, uh, accounts, uh, the CNCF accounts, our support, but we ask uh, our media partners as well to be very vocal, uh, our sponsors, of course, when we find them. Um, and uh, um, we try to get out the CNCF community as well to attract more people from other communities. So we promote on Slack channels, on uh, Telegram channels, uh, wherever we are active outside the CNCF so that people can even know about it because uh, we need to attract more talent, more people on that side too. And um, what I find very important in these terms is the collaboration with other KCD. Uh, I find that it's very important to create a fabric with on, within um, uh, the KCD groups uh, among the KCD groups. For example, uh, we had a great help from KCD France and KCD Amsterdam on giving details. And that is very helpful because you are talking uh, with people that are struggling like you. They understand your pain points. They can find alternative solutions that you haven't think of. So that could be something we could work on more in future. Uh, for example, trying to find a shared calendar of KCD events. We were talking, talking before mm, this, uh, this panel with uh, uh, Czech and Slovak KCDers. Uh, it's difficult. We are, we are competing somehow. Uh, Europe is a very small territory, right? So um, we have to um, distribute KCD events better over the year and maybe to work together on the sponsorship um, quest. And collaborate on that side too. That, that's my experience, our experience as Casey Italy. Um, Paula, do you want to, have you got any, any thoughts on this topic? I mean, uh, I think Annalise is correct, like the amount of time it takes to promote, to get people to sign up. Um, one thing that we did last year, we were lucky that we had raised enough sponsorship to cover our costs. And so what we tried to then do was to give more tickets away. So one thing on the, on the topic specifically of tickets, one thing is to try to not price them too highly because you want community folks to come. The whole point is to bring in the community. So you don't want to overprice the tickets. 
And then if you can, we gave some to students, we gave some to, again, underrepresented groups. We then put out a tweet that said, folks who'd been recently laid off could just apply for tickets. You didn't need to provide proof. Just ask us and we'll give you a ticket. Just trying to get um, more of the community involved, more people to actually be able to attend our event. I mean, I think that's a good point, isn't it? That, you know, one way of thinking about the costing of events, and, and I think this is kind of where we went, is that um, if you, if you really cost the event on the basis of the sponsorship covering the costs, then it allows you to be a lot more flexible with, uh, in terms of ticket allocation. And you know, there's always going to be people who you would like to have at those events, you know, students, folks who, who can't afford the ticket price, etc. So um, if you could start from the perspective of, of the sponsorship actually covering the cost of the event, then it gives you that, that flexibility. Anyone else want to add anything on the... Uh, the, the sort of tickets and promotion part? Um, yeah, what we did, we, we split the tickets. So we have a two-day event, and now you can buy early bird ticket. This is closed, sorry. Um, you can the, get the two-day access, but you can also get one access for, for the Monday and one ticket for the Tuesday. Because we have seen that like, some people like have just too much meetings. They're asking for, hey, where I can sit in the meeting room for, like, it's the event, why, why? we don't have a meeting room for you. Um, so this helped, and it helped this year also, like already for for the early bird sales that like, a lot of people like just purchase it already. Um, and then, if you organize something, do not panic. If like two weeks before the event happened, you just have sold sixty percent of the tickets, that's good, because the other forty percent comes in the next few hours, and then it's like your your inbox is basically getting spammed by people who are like start buying the tickets, and you also see this little spike after you have announced the speakers, for example. Thanks so. for reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, a, this is a good thing there. Okay, folks. Well, I think um, we've, we've only got a couple of minutes left. So I think we're going to just skip the, the last uh, bit that we were going to talk about stuff on the day because we do want to, to put up here uh, a bunch of, of resources that if you're interested in running a KCD of your own that you can go and check out. So there's fantastic resources from the CNCF in the, uh, the Kubernetes Community Days repo. Um, obviously, you can come and reach out to, to any of the organizers of, of KCDs all over the world. We're more than happy to share our experiences. Um, Katie is in the audience here. You won't be able to miss her in the pink. Um, so just in the last couple of minutes, um, do we have any questions from the, uh, from the audience? Ooh, quite a few. I'm going to go to the gentleman in the middle there, because uh, I know you had your hand up earlier. Hang on one second. If you could wait for the microphone, that'd be great because it's been recorded. Thanks. He's Italian uh, too. <laughs> I'm not. Organizer. I'm not. Um, I have a, um, kind of a, a question and a remark. That for the Italian uh, KCD, I noticed that the CFP was extremely short uh, in, in the time frame to submit papers uh, was very short. Uh, so I wonder how do you plan to get rich for community with such a short CFP? How, how uh, short? How should a CFP time well, be? Well, because from I'm what I understood, the, C the KCD Italy is in July. Yes, exactly. Uh, and the CFP if was open, I think, in February and it, and it closed in March or something like that? Was I, am yeah, I mistaken? I, I don't remember exactly, but it was open for two or three months. I thought, Polo, yeah? I thought it was shorter, but okay. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Three months, yeah. Okay. And Sh the should, second, it, should it be longer? I think, it sh I think considering that, the, uh, that you, are, you want the reach of the local community. So, my so I, I say the remark and then I, I exp maybe it makes more sense. Uh, I think <laughs> that the Kubernetes Community Day is it's an event that is promoting the local community or reaching out to the local community. So the local community should have a strong say or a strong chance to get there as attendees and speakers. Uh, whereas what I see also at the KCD Amsterdam is that there was a lot of enterprise that was global rather than local. Whereas the like ING talks or local banks talks were the places that, that everybody wanted to be to listen. What, they, what are those guys doing? So I think the KCD organizers should actually actively, actively reach out to the local enterprises to say, bring, me in, bring in 
speakers and especially diverse speakers. And then afterwards, this. Let me say something. Yeah. I see the I see the ambassadors looking at each other, like. Oh, uh, I might be get wrong. The microphone. I might be wrong, and as said, I'm really new, so this is just what I feel and what my opinion is. But I think it depends on how big your local community is too. Annalisa, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap it up there. We've literally run sorry. out of time. I'm so sorry, folks. For those of you who had questions, um, we will uh, hang around um, afterwards out in the hallway and you can, you can grab the panel there. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you to, thank you to everybody who, who commits their time uh, to organizing Kubernetes Community Days and thank you to the fabulous panel.